Well, back is on to another episode. We are one. Faces are beneath the uh, theatrical makeup or the stage makeup, and it's Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley, two members of the group. Okay. These accusations about devil worship following you around these days, pestering you, uh, bothering you, what's the truth or falsity of them? It's, it's really very, very prevalent. We try, we really try to make light of it most of the time, but it, it's really amazing that there, there are people out there who seem to be using this for really self-serving purposes. I think using this as a guide um, to further themselves as opposed to really speaking the truth. I mean, it's Gene. Today was uh, filled with interviews. This is the end of our day. And uh, some of the interviews had to do with um, pretty strong accusations that we were ruining the minds of, of uh, people coming to see our shows. And it, I think it's pretty thick only because these people, <clears throat> excuse me, seem to have a hold over a large segment of the population for some reason. I think news all of a sudden is interested in what they've got to say, and they don't seem to represent anybody except themselves. It, I think it's pretty obvious that the more they talk about us, the more people come to see our shows. So every you don't have to be a marketing genius to figure that out. And so I think it's pretty clear that they're interested in just promoting themselves. Obviously, they always make sure that their names are spelled right in the newspapers, their pictures are always in there, and uh, no organized... Uh, organization, religious anyway, seems to recognize these people. It, but there's some uh, legislation that works in a couple of places. Here. Yeah, in Either fact, we're going to ban some recording practices. Do you have flipping in uh, there's the, backwards uh, tracks and things of that nature? It's legislation against what's called uh, backtracking yeah. and backmasking. And uh, what these groups are claiming is that there are hidden satanic messages that are put onto records that if the records are played backwards, then the message has become clear. They've accused rock bands of that, and uh, they want labels put on the records. The the thing that's amazing is that at this Dangerous point, to your mental health or something like that. Well, you know, we're we're leading people down the the wrong path. What's amazing though is now they're hearing those same messages on Ann Murray and Glenn Campbell records. Hmm. So um, I don't know. You get into the oh. precedent. I think is only that that some. Some fundamentalist creature from some small town in America is going to determine what your moral, what your moral persuasion is, what my moral persuasion is, which may not agree with his, and that somehow this guy is is going to have some kind of an effect on legislation. I think it's pretty scary. These guys are burning records. The next step is to burn books, and the next step is to tell you what you can listen to and what you can't listen to, and which concerts you can go to and which books you can read. I think it's pretty scary. <laughs> Okay, sure. let's take a short break down here, guys, and uh, we'll come back and continue our conversation with two members of the band. This back now, and talking with two members of the band, Kiss, Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley. We were uh, talking before the break about um, some of the motives of the people who are chasing you around with accusations of uh, putting on uh, devil worship shows and uh, Satanism in general, things like that. Let's, let's look at your motives for a while, um, when you come on network TV and you're dressed up like this and you refuse to unmask, what are your motives? Is it pure hype? Or are you just doing it for the money? We're a band. We have an image that we try to project as you try to project a certain image by wearing that sweater and tie. Mm -hmm. um, I think you try to look your best and give the public what they expect from you, and we pretty much try to do the same. This is the image that we've worked years for people to really – it comes to mind when people think of the word kiss. Why dilute that by uh, destroying people's fantasies? Really, we're dealing with mystique. You've been um, called an example of the, uh, let's see, primacy of the exotic packaging over aesthetic accomplishment. Uh, is that true? We don't know what it, we don't really know what any of that stuff means. All we know is I'll that you do. <laughs> the truth is that what we've always been committed to is to putting on the best rock and roll show in the world. Now, you can take that and you can you know, sort of uh, write very fancy phrases around it and how it has Nietzschean overtones and how it re relates to the fall of the Roman Empire. And the, you know, all that stuff is just fancy. We're a rock and roll band. We get up on stage and we're committed to putting on the best shows in the world, regardless of the state of the economy. We're going out with massive rock and roll shows and literally giving people the best show in the world. Apparently, the audiences are not uh, 
the record buying public is not uh, so enthusiastic about the images they used to be. I think your new um, uh, album is 45th. Right. You know, that's a long way from platinum. Uh, okay. I think the time has passed. That's a good question. I think it's 10 years on. We've been away from American audiences for three years, and I think we've got to go back to the people the way we did in Italy, get up on stage, and you've got to prove it to the people that you're still the best. They call themselves the new wave, and the rest of that music, although they do have their own image, is uh, certainly not like yours. It's not that heavy metal, uh, demonic influence type uh, band that was very popular in the 70s. No, it is, it, what, are, you, are you out of place? I mean, you're in your 30s now. Do you feel slightly ridiculous appearing in public like this anymore? Not at all. Not at all. You know, new wave is all well and good, but it'll be a long time before it's sold 50 million albums. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we've written a place for ourselves. There are bands that have been around 20, 25 years. And the secret of longevity means that there are times where your popularity goes up and down. Mm -hmm. Nobody maintains a certain level of popularity. The, the people that survive the long run, those are the champs. I mean, you, you've got your stones, you've got Sinatra. Certainly, there was a time Sinatra could hardly get arrested. I, I think it's true with everybody, including television programs. You just can't keep, you know, the same pace. And also, when you're number one, if you wind up to be number two or number three, it's a massive nosedive in popularity, but most bands aspire to get to that place. I mean, if you sell 700,000 records, for instance, and you're used to selling 3 million records, you know, that's a, that's a very... The, you know, big drop in sales. Well, most groups sell, you know, 50,000 records. You, the comparison is only, com I mean, is the glass half full or half empty? That's the perspective. Right. But the, the image that you project and the kind of um, uh, things that you do on stage, which have been called outrageous by a lot of people, and, uh, uh, you know, you, you're still doing them. When, when you realize the audience that you're reaching, which seems to be composed largely of 10 to 14 year old girls, you ever feel ashamed of yourself? I don't agree with, I don't think you've done your homework uh, because the audience that we are attracting is probably average age somewhere around 18 or 19. Um, maybe your facts are from six, five, six years ago. But if that was our audience, they've certainly grown up um, as far as being ashamed of it. Probably no more so than you are for doing what you do. Hopefully you have as it's much pride for a person in his mid-30s, is it? No, I, nor, nor is... I, you know, rock and roll, we've grown up with rock and roll. And I think everything that we've grown up listening to, we digested and we learned. Mm -hmm. And it takes a long time to, to develop craft. And I think we've come a long way. It's been 10 years. And whoever it is that shows up at the concert is there for one thing and for one thing only. They want to see the best group in the world. And also, let's, let's hear your message, quote unquote. What are you trying to tell my 14 year old daughter? Well, it was a little bit older. I'd tell her to come to my hotel room. Okay. All right, that's fair. But um, what really is your message to the kids? Enjoy yourselves. Everybody needs a release. There's, there's enough bosses in this world and there's enough teachers telling you what you have to do. Um, everybody needs to have a good time once in a while. Um, we certainly don't go up and preach anything. Basically, we're telling people, believe in yourself. Do what you think is best for you. We've done what we thought was best for us. Certainly worked. Have some faith in yourself. Okay. Thank you guys very much. That's Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley of Van Kiss and good fortune to you. Thank you. Thank you.